Today is Future Day, October 21st, but it is 2023. Still, this day does belong to one of my favorite movies of all time, Back to the Future. And of course, Future Day, October 21st, that is the day that Marty McFly went to the future. But that was in 2015, which is now our past. 2015, which actually happened eight years ago now already, which is really crazy. Down here, um, I actually have the ticket stub from Back to the Future. This is the part, this is actually part two that they re-released in theaters. This was at the uh, Lake Cinema, Hermantown, Minnesota, October 21st, 2015. $5 for the ticket. They still do some re-releases that are $5, but not at Marcus anymore. I don't think they've been $5 for quite a while. But still, that was uh, one of the best viewing experiences ever. Just a bunch of Back to the Future fans getting together to, to watch the movie. It was a big deal, actually, at the time. Uh, this was the promo they had for it. These, they only showed the second one. Some theaters, I think non-Marcus theaters, were doing the entire trilogy. Personally, I wish they would have done that. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see the first Back to the Future on the big screen until this past year, and they're actually doing another re-release today. Marcus Theaters is re-releasing the first movie today in honor of Future Day, but at the time, they only showed the second one. But it was still a big deal. It was a crazy crowd. People were clapping when Doc said the date, the very date that was, you know, was 2015 they were giving out these t-shirts pepsi perfect it does not look the way they promoted it here this is the shirt as you see the future is now and uh the party activities were basically getting the shirts but also they had a delorean at the hermantown theater uh, a fan of the movie who actually owns a delorean brought it in and of course, there's also uh, USA Today, when it was Future Day, they released this newspaper uh, on the cover of the daily USA Today uh, that they released. So they, they put this as an overlay for all of the copies for that day. So I, I bought the paper and then I kept this overlay. Um, everything is the same as you see it in the movie, except for uh, for the headlines here. They did change one of the headlines because in the movie, it mentions something about Princess Diana. Uh, of course, Princess Diana would pass away after the making of the second movie. So um, they actually removed that headline from the front. This giant uh, ad for Jaws 19. Another ad for USA Today, but it used this awesome logo, which I actually, I, was, I think that logo's cool. It's very 80s, but still. And then of course a promotion for the Blu-ray set. This is a t-shirt I bought off of Facebook. Um, who knows who the seller was? It was probably just, uh, you know, it was probably nothing official. This wasn't officially licensed uh, merchandise. Of course, here's the different editions I own. This was the set that was actually released in 2015 for, and it looks like maybe the light doesn't work anymore. Oh, and as you can see, they actually have instructions to replace the battery. Uh, this is the uh, book that uh, came with this set. And this set was the first time they'd ever released the animated series. For the 30th anniversary, though, they did... This wasn't the first time that the series was on Blu-ray, but it was the first time that they had released this disc. This was an exclusive bonus disc that had some new special features on it, including some new stuff recorded of Christopher Lloyd as Doc Brown and uh, some different special features in here. The biggest thing was looking back to the future. So that's actually a documentary that was released only with the 2009 DVD of Back to the Future on a second disc. For some reason, that never made it to the 2010 Blu-ray set. Um, I actually don't have the 2010 Blu-ray set. Uh, I pass it along to my sister. But this set is the same exact discs, except it came with the bonus disc that included 
pretty much all the special features. So this pretty much has everything. And then there was, as they labeled it, the 35th anniversary trilogy, but as you see, it's just called the Ultimate Trilogy here. Um, they released it in 2020, but now you can usually find this 4K set pretty easily. These are actually new. I don't think they're the same discs that were used for the 2010 set and for the uh, 2015 set. I think these are actually all new Blu-ray discs. And uh, of course, there's also the 4Ks. This is the first time they released the trilogy on 4K. And it came with that same bonus disc, which actually has a few other special features on here. The biggest thing is the lost edition tapes. So they actually had some different auditions from other actors who tried to get in this movie. So there's even more special features with this one. So this one's even more complete. Uh, but when they released this, they did not release the animated series. They only did that for the 30th anniversary set. But still, we have very limited footage of Eric Stoltz as Marty McFly. They've never released the audio of his performance in the movie. We've only ever seen some visuals that were used, uh, some of the footage that was used in like documentaries of Back to the Future, but they've never released the actual audio of Eric Stoltz as the character. They don't show them as like, you know, deleted scenes or anything. A completely different version of the movie, but I don't know how much they even got filmed, and I don't know how much of it could be released nowadays, but they've never done it, and I doubt they'll ever do it at this point. And of course, there was this cool thing. It came with a hoverboard. It actually does hover as a, like a magnet. So that's a cool thing that this set came with. And I was actually going to show that book that came with the 30th anniversary set is actually just excerpts from this bigger book that is full of stuff and there's even knickknacks inside like you can get the save the clock tower uh pamphlet there's the poster for jaws 19 in here there's uh this photo of marty and his siblings when you grab it it actually makes them disappear and there was also this book that came out in 2015 which this book um there was actually stuff in here that I had never known about the trilogy. Some stuff that had never been in any of the documentaries. The biggest thing is that they do talk a little more about Eric Stoltz. And they also talk a lot about the Crispin Glover situation. And how he wasn't in 2 or 3. How uh, there's some uh, dispute between whether the reasoning was because Crispin Glover was asking for too much money. Or was it because Bob Gale never liked him and was purposely trying to write him out of the movie? They both have different versions of the story in this book, but that's what makes this book pretty good. It's like, it goes over some stuff that's never really been talked about in the documentaries. Um, and also about the actor that replaced Crispin Glover and how he kind of got screwed in the process. And uh, Crispin Glover was trying to, like, take advantage of him to get, like, inside details about the making of the second film. And I think was the person that clued him in that they were using Crispin Glover's footage and likeness without his permission. Then he, I believe, successfully sued the producers. And uh, that really wasn't the fault of the actor who replaced Crispin Glover. But because of that, he sort of was blacklisted from Hollywood after this. That's the way the book tells it anyway. But uh, interesting book. Um, some A little bit of drama, but... I think it's good because it's some extra stuff that I had never really heard about the trilogy. So, uh, I, I mean, I have a lot of great movie going experiences, but, uh, that night, October 21st, 2015 was one of my favorites, uh, to go. I saw the movie, uh, just, and it was only the second one, but still the second movie is good. I like the entire trilogy. Um, maybe my favorite movie series. I think it's, pretty close to perfect as far as the way the mechanics of the story work and how everything is neatly tied up. I, I think everything ends up working. The first movie in particular is, I think, a perfect screenplay. I think it's just like a perfect movie, about as perfect as you can get. And uh, the next two are a lot of fun. 
and I think connect very well, even though they didn't really plan sequels initially. Um, but seeing that second movie with a sold out crowd, um, saw it with my friend and my sister, and it was just uh, all the reactions that you would want out of the kind of reactions you get at like a Marvel movie nowadays. People were giving to a movie that at that point was uh, over like 30 years old. So just a lot of fun. And uh, I remember the news was there. Uh, there was actually footage of me on TV. I remember we were watching WDIO because I was wondering if I was uh, going to be one of the people in the in the news clip. And I was shown on the news sitting in the DeLorean because I had dressed up as Marty McFly for the day. So uh, that was cool to see. And uh, I really wish that clip was still online. I, I have no way of getting that clip now, unfortunately, unless maybe I could call the station and they might have a copy of it. And uh, the other thing that was cool is that right after the news was Jimmy Kimmel, and he actually had Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox um, on the show. They were interviewed, but also they came in character in what I thought was actually the best... Um, I think that was Christopher Lloyd at his best since... Uh, he's come back as Doc many times for, like, commercials and such, but I thought that was his, like, best return to the character because I thought he was very funny on the show, uh, and it was just cool to see Michael J. Fox in, you know, the outfit again, and just a lot of fun. That, just a special day in movie history. You don't you don't get that often. And, um, you know, future dates in movies, and then when they come in real time, just a celebration of that date, and... You know, it's happened for other movies, but I didn't see anything quite as big as what Back to the Future Part 2 and the trilogy got that day. So, well, I think that's everything for today. And this has been Future Day, so enjoy it. And remember, the future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one.